This film is intended for eye surgeons for training and education purposes. Viewer discretion is strongly recommended. Hi, this is Dr. Deepak Meghur and today I'll be demonstrating the use of a snare for nucleus bisection in manual Swanson cataract surgery. So as I have been repeatedly commenting that, you know, learning to bisect the nucleus is a great way to improve the post-operative refractive outcomes in manual Swanson cataract surgery. So once we start doing temporal incisions and learn how to bisect the nucleus, our post-operative refractive results are going to be almost comparable with that of phacomulsification. So I think it's critical that we learn and master these nucleus bisection techniques. So I have previously demonstrated the in the back bisection technique as well. This is one case where I'll be showing the use of a snare for bisecting the nucleus. The surgery is being done under post-subtenance anesthesia. I've given 1 ml of lignocaine in the post-subtenance injection in the inferior medial quadrant. The conjunctival flap is raised. My aim is to do a 6 mm sclerocorneal tunnel. As is customary for me, I make an initial groove just to stabilize the globe there. And then I fashion the external scleral incision and then begin to tunnel. The external incision is slightly frown shape and the central part of the incision is around 1 to 1.5 mm posterior to the posterior limbus. The intracorneal tunneling is continued on either side and it is at least 1.5 mm anterior to the posterior limbus. So this ensures that we have an adequate valve which is be self-sealing and will be secure. Just to remind it again, this is a temporal incision. The rexis is first completed under the cover of OVD. And after that, I'm going to enter the antechamber through the main wound. Again, while creating the internal incision, care is taken to ensure that the inner lip runs always parallel to the limbus. So this ensures that your valve is functioning very well and these wounds are very strong and they also ensure very good refractive stability in the post-operative period. I get asked quite a lot of questions that how can we perform SICS without having a traction superior suture. As you can see in this case, we are using none and I don't use any of the traction sutures in majority of the cases, it's not required at all. We need to find some way to stabilize the globe and uh, you'll find your way. So I don't think superior traction suture is required at all, either during wound construction or and also during nucleus management itself. Hydrodissection is done and it's ensured that the nucleus is freely mobile. I am using cohesive OVD that is containing sodium hyaluronate to maintain the chamber as I am prolapsing the nucleus out. And then using two Sinsky hooks, the nucleus is wheeled out of the bag into the entry chamber. The chamber is refilled once again with the sodium hyaluronate just to create and maintain some space as I'll be introducing the snare. I've reduced the diameter of the loop as it is entering into the eye. It's entered in slightly oblique fashion and then once it goes under the nucleus, the loop diameter is increased slightly so that it just goes and hooks the entire nucleus. I'm now just positioning the snare to be exactly the center of the nucleus so that I get equal sized heminuclei. So once I'm sure that the positioning is all right, now is the time to bisect the nucleus. So the snare is pulled and this tense nucleus just snaps into two quite effortlessly. And the chamber is again refilled with OVD. I am using sodium hyaluronate to reform the chamber and I would recommend this OVD instead of HPMC in people who are learning this technique because the chamber maintenance is quite good and better than HPMC. So HPMC also works equally fine but I think until we get enough experience with this technique, the sodium hyaluronate option would be a much more safer option to choose. 
Using a small vectus and a dialer, I'm going to extract each of these fragments out in the FICO sandwich technique. It's important to use a smaller vectus as in this case because if we use a bigger vectus, then probably the heminucleus can slip into the loop itself. The ovid is again refilled back and the second heminucleus is also extracted out. The fundamental goal of us is to extract this nucleus without damaging the coin endothelium. That should be our primary goal. And we need to take adequate measures, especially when you are trying to learn any new technique. I just want to remind all of you that, you know, whenever we try to learn a new technique, I think we should never forget that, you know, the fundamental goal always has to be uh, protecting the intraocular structures and use whatever ways and means which you can so that uh, we don't mechanically damage the endothelium. Endothelium is priceless. So do whatever you can to maintain the safety of the endothelium. The epinucleus is flushed out and the cortex is being aspirated out. And the intraocular lens is placed into the bag. So we have a nice secure wound temporarily which produces very little astigmatism in this patient. Let's go back and rewind the case and observe the snaring technique. The fundamental principle is to maintain the antechamber when you're maneuvering with the snare inside the antechamber. So a good cohesive OVD is going to do the job for us. And when you're introducing the snare, it has to be slightly oblique and the diameter of the loop has to be reduced. And as it goes and begins engaging the nucleus, the loop of the snare has to be gradually increased and just enough so that the entire circumference of the nucleus is engaged. And then it's time to just position it appropriately so that I get two equal sized heminucleus. Once we get this, the next step is very easy. Just pull the string and the nucleus are broken effortlessly. And again, while removing each of these fragments, it's important that we maintain the chamber always and uh, never compromise on the safety of the coin endothelium. So that's it. Thank you for watching and hope you found this helpful.